Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at adding texture to text in Illustrator. Now I recently did a video on how to add texture to objects, but this time we're having a look at text which is just a little bit different. So I'm going to start with the document I'm going to be working on. In my case it's going to be 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's just the size of my screen. Now again, in case you haven't seen that previous video, let's step through getting our texture. So I'm going to choose File and then Place. And I'm going to find a texture image. Now I have some textures that I use from a person called Skeletal Mess, who is a photographer and you can get to his textures on Flickr. Now I'm going to use the exact same textures I used last time because I like an effect that I'm going to create with it. I'll click Place. Now the dimensions of this texture file are a little different to my actual document. I'm just going to click in the top corner here and that will just paste the image in. Now I'm going to zoom out because I just need to make sure that I've got it where I want it. Well, it's a little bit wider in this case than the actual artboard, so I'm just going to bring it in a bit. Now most texture images you could also squeeze up a little bit if you wanted to because they're textures. Nobody's going to say, hey, look, that's not what the texture was. You just skewed it out of alignment because they don't know what a texture is supposed to look like. But I actually do like this one a little bit more separated. So this is going to be my image. Because it's a photograph and because we want to use this as a vector texture, we have to trace it. So I'm going to click here on Image Trace. And I'm just going to ignore this message because it works pretty well for me. The first trace you get is always going to look appalling, so just persevere with it because it is quite simple to make changes to this. You'll go to the Image Trace panel. If you don't see that here, you can go to Window and then there's an option for Image Trace down here. First thing to do is to turn Preview off because otherwise every change you make to this dialog, Illustrator is going to go and complete the trace for that particular change. Now you may not see your advanced options, you'll want to show them. We're going to set the mode to color. I'm going to use limited color. It doesn't need a lot of colors. 30 is just fine. I'm going to make my paths and my corners about the same amount and bring my noise over. So this is going to simplify the texture a little bit. That's just fine for me. When I've got my settings right, I'll click preview and then Illustrator will go ahead and image trace this. Now this could take a little bit of time. If you find that this crashes your computer, for example, then you may want to restart your computer. If you are just finding that it slows it down a lot, it helps to close things down that you're not actually using so that you give your computer the full resources available because this can be quite a complex process, particularly if you're working with large images and particularly if you're working with a lot of colors. So mine is now traced and I'm really happy with that. So I'm going up here to expand. Right now we've just got a traced image. It's not actually vector shapes. Clicking expand will convert it to vector shapes. And you can see that every one of these shapes now has a border around it. In the layers panel, you'll see that you've got a group and inside the group are all the shapes. That's just perfect. That's exactly as it should be. Leave everything in a group for now. Otherwise you're just gonna have a really big mess. The next thing to do is to go and create your text. So I want to be deselected here. So I'm just placing my text on the top of the document. Now, there's a chance that when you go to try and put your text in, Illustrator thinks you're going to do text on a path. And so that's not going to help at all. So you can do one of two things. Either you can start putting your text over here where there are no paths, or you can just lock this group down. So just click here to lock the group down and now Illustrator doesn't recognize what's underneath this path, so you can go ahead and add your text. Now my text is really, really small, so I'm just going to wind it up to about 200 points so that we can see it. I'm going to choose a font to use before I go too much further. Now the font I'm using is called Anagram NF but you can use whatever font that you like. But I suggest a nice thick font is a good idea because you actually want to see the texture through it. So at this point, if you want to do something with the text and have it editable later on, you'll want to make a duplicate of it. But in this case, I just want a piece of text filled with my texture. So I'm not going to bother making a duplicate. What I'm going to do next is going to compromise my text. It's no longer going to be editable. So what I'm going to do is convert it to paths. So with the text selected, I'll go to Type and choose Create Outlines. 
So that's actually turned my type into outlines. I'm keeping an eye on the layers panel here and you will want to keep an eye on the layers panel because you need to know what's happening with your type, whether you're working with groups or whatever. Here I've got a group of objects and every single one of these letters is a compound path. The problem with that is that I cannot use that to crop because these are individual paths. So what I'm going to do is go and grab the entire group and I'm going to make the group of characters a compound path. So we're sort of making two levels of compound paths here. Every one of these characters is a compound path, but we're going to make an overall compound path. So choose object and then compound path and make and this is the end result. You should have a path, a compound path that is all of those letters and you'll probably have lost your fill and that's just fine because it's very easy to put it back on. So now we can use this as a cutting guide. What we're going to do is unlock this group that contains the texture. We're going to select everything by just dragging over it or you can press Control or Command A you just need to have selected the compound path with your type in it and also your texture. For what we're about to do, it's critical that your type is on top of your texture because what you're saying to Illustrator is whatever is the topmost object and there's only one of them and it's that compound path, we want you to get rid of every piece of that texture that is not immediately within this shape. So we'll go over here to the Pathfinder and click here on Crop. Again, this process can be quite processor intensive if you've got a very detailed texture. Mine happened pretty quickly. So now what I've got is a shape that is the shape of my word and inside that are all of these objects that go to make up the texture. Now one of the things I like to do at this point is to go and recolor everything because I'm not overly happy with this color. I'd like it to be a whole lot brighter. So I'll select over my type and I'm going up here to the recolor artwork dialog because there are lots of colors in this particular illustration and I want to recolor everything at once. So here in the assign area, I'm going to click this icon. It's just three bars and I'm going to global adjust. With global adjust, I can make a global adjustment to every single one of these colors and what I want to do is brighten it. So I'm just going to make it a whole lot brighter to start off with. Now I'm going to edit. These are the colors that are in the illustration. I'm going to click here to link the harmony colors. So now I can drag around and that's going to change all the colors in my texture. Now that's one approach that you can take. There's a second approach which I think is also really attractive and that is to grab the harmony rules and start applying some harmony rules. So for example, the right complement what that does is it takes all the colors that I'm using and finds the right complement of the color. So we're starting to break the texture up a little bit into some colors. So there are all sorts of options that you can select from this harmony color list. And every one of them is going to change the look of your object. Now at this point you can still come back in here and adjust this so once you find a sort of harmony color that you like you can actually walk the colors within that color scheme around and they're maintaining the same relationship to each other so you can see that this bend in the selection is being maintained as I'm dragging around so we're getting colors that work really nicely together in our textured type. So I'm just going to find something I like here. I'm kind of liking these sorts of colors. So I'll just click OK. Now if you want to put a stroke around this type, there is something to be aware of. Let me just go and grab the stroke and let's put a green stroke on the type. When I try and put a green stroke on the type, what's happening is that every single shape inside the letter forms is turning into a shape that has a green stroke around it. That's obviously not what we want to happen. To make it so that the stroke goes around the letter forms, make sure that you have everything selected and go to the Appearance panel. If you don't see it, choose Window and then Appearance. So we're going to put our stroke back on. So we've got our group here selected. I'm going to click here on Add New Stroke and I'm going to add my stroke. I'm probably going to use a sort of dark brown here so that we can see it really clearly. 
So I'm increasing the stroke width here and you can see exactly as happened before, the stroke is going around every one of those individual shapes. What we need to do is to tell Illustrator, no, that's not what we want. We want the stroke around the individual letter forms. And what we do is we drag the stroke from here underneath content. So in the moment it's a stroke around the group, we want to do it around the content. So I'm just going to drag it down here. And when I do, the stroke now appears on the outside of the letters. It's not thick enough, but that's a simple fix. So you can see that it's no longer around the objects that go to make up the letter forms. We do have a few problems in that it's got spikes everywhere. Let's see if we can solve those. We'll go to the stroke option and let's see if these will solve it. By using a different selection for the corners, you can get rid of those little spiky bits. I'm thinking I'll probably use the middle option here, which is a round join. So there we have type filled with a texture, we've been able to recolor it. And we now know, having done that, how we can add a stroke around our type. Before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.